I'm going to work for U.S. Lockheed. Awesome. How about you? What are you going to be doing? Going down to Missouri to Kansas City. We're going to win Nelson. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going? Good. I'm Dave Jr. 551. Oh, nice to see you, Dave. I was expecting your call. Please sit down. I'd shake your hand, but you know with the virus yep. and everything. Oh, so Mr. Kai's busy today? I... Yeah, he had prepped me for this, and he's not going to be able to make it in. And since I'm the owner, I guess I'm, I'm going to be the decision maker, so I'm going to look at this anyway. So I thought I'd just sit down and listen while you're here. And, yeah. You didn't really get a chance to prep me very well. I got some notes from him, but... Um, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. So what's what's the scoop? Why are you here and what are we doing? Uh, so uh, last time, you care if I take notes or anything? No, no, i please do. Um, so last time I spoke with Mr. Cadiz when I came in, um, he had a lot, uh, what he told me was that you guys have a lot of downtime with your equipment. Um, we started out with a little bit of small talk, but he really wanted to get down to it because he said you guys are super busy, so we'll just do that today. Um, some things that he really wanted from me was he wanted testimonials, equipment information, warranty, and trade in it. Um, so he said you guys have spent a lot of downtime. He said you guys have 5,000 acres of alfalfa that you guys do. Um, you do about three cuts a year with it. And um, he really wanted to expand. He said you guys are really pushing to expand. Um, so he said a lot of your equipment is getting old and outdated. So he kind of wanted me to come up with some solutions for you guys. Um, is that something that you're thinking also? or? Well, I know we've got downtime issues. And I know yeah. that we have a Um, so what we sell is actually, we sell Fent. Oh, um, so uh, are you familiar with Fent products at all? Yeah, you know, my, my grandpa fought in World War II, and, um, and we're very pro-American. I don't know where Fent's at, but I know he was in Europe fighting against the Germans. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah, I think, is Fent like Swedish or something? Yeah, so Fent is, uh, is produced, manufactured in, it's a European tractor. Um, just got introduced in the U.S. about two, three years ago. Um, we've been we've been selling those. Uh, so pretty much what sells these is their warranty on these products. Um, it's, Where is it manufactured again? Um, I'm not exactly sure on the town. But in what country? It's just in Europe somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what what country or. It's not in Germany, is it? Um, I don't know. I can get back to you on the information though. Okay. okay. Keep on. Uh, but the thing that sells primarily about the fence trackers is. You know, it's capabilities and how much money it saves the end user. Um, another thing is it's gold star warranty. So I really wanted to press the warranty today because that was something that Mr. Kais was interested in. Um, is that something that you're really worried about too? Is that, you know, what kind of warranty the tractor? Well, I, what I'm really concerned about is if we do this, because, you know, right here in, in Kearney, um, who's, who would be the dealer? Um, so we would be the dealer. So we are actually a dealer of fan tractor. Okay. Um, and then another concern Mr. Kais had was since the tractor is produced in a different country, he was concerned about, he said, you come to me about downtime, well, it's a foreign tractor, so where do you get your parts? Um, so how long would the wait time be on those parts? So being an ICO dealer that we are, and a FET being an ICO product, we carry 98% of the products of the FET tractors. So you need to help me out. What's the name of your company again? iTech 451. What is it again? iTech 451. Okay, and you are an ADCO dealer? Yep. Okay. Okay. And where are you located? Uh, we're located here in Carney, Nebraska. Where's your other school? Um, so we have, uh, we're located in Colorado, Iowa, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Um, our headquarters, headquarters is located in Denver, Colorado. Um, the next closest store would be Lincoln, Nebraska. That's our next closest store. Okay. Um, we also have a store in Omaha. Um, we have one in Guernsey, Wyoming, and we have another one in Scottsbluff, Nebraska. And another one in Pella, Iowa. Okay, so you got quite a number of stores that are done. Okay, that's great. And uh, Carney, how many how many service techs do you have? We have five service techs here in Carney. Okay. Um, it's about probably about your regular size parts department. I wouldn't know exactly the size of it to tell you the truth. Okay. But I can, if that's something important for you, I can get back. I'm just curious how many dollars you have in stock there, just because if I if we get in a partnership, the last thing I need to do is wait for. 
product coming in for one of the cities if I'm down. Right? Yeah. I'm doing my last cut or whatever. Okay. So the bottom line is you want to try to sell this in 10 tractors. Yep. Okay. So that um to add on to your parts, so you talked about the parts department. Um, so we carry 98% of the parts um since it's an agro product. Another thing is for downtime, if you are down, if you're within that gold star warranty, so that gold star warranty is um it is for three years or up to 3,000 hours or 3,000 3, hours on the equipment, um, whichever one comes first. Um, so if you're down within that warranty, then if it's not, if we can't get that tractor up and working within 48 working hours, then we'll give you a loaner tractor at the same horsepower to continue your operation. Okay. Um, let's see what else is that on that warranty. Um, all of our technicians are certified. So each of our, we, uh, our technicians are all certified to work on the equipment. Um, you have to go to school to be a technician for us. So all of our technicians are certified. Okay. Is there, is there, How long have you guys been in business? Uh, we've been in business. Um, my tech company has been in business for 45 years. So I know a little bit about the fence, mm -hmm. and I do think it's made in Germany. And I guess what I'm going to ask is, I know it has a reputation of being a very um, complicated piece of equipment. Yep. Very high end, very complicated. And then the value proposition, I guess what I need you to help me with is, you know, we're pretty, I would say average big farm. Do you know anything about, about Botsford Family Farms? What do you know about us? Um, I know you guys are pretty respected farm within the area. That's kind of what brought me to you guys in the first place. Um, just based off of what you guys told me is you got 5,000 acres that you guys cut and you're trying to expand. Right. Um, you guys don't run any cattle at all. You're just primarily um, farming operations. So that's about my limit on your guys' company. Okay. So so as I'm looking and we talk about the complication of these, I'm, I'm kind of more of a simple guy and I like working on stuff myself if I can. And, the rumor is, is that the fin is a good tractor, but it's extremely complicated. Yeah. Lots of bells, whistles, features, and bells, whistles, features I've found in my career tend to go wrong. Yeah. Always something going wrong. This one of those damn computers always going out on me right in the middle of the cut. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you're going to have some obstacles here. And by the way, I also hear that not only is it kind of like the Cadillac with all the bells and whistles, but it's priced that way too. So I guess what I want to know is what is the premium <clears throat> over a new deer or a new cat that I'm going to pay for the fin? So price-wise, so it depends on your horsepower. What horsepower are you thinking on there? What, what would you recommend? Um, probably our, for your guys' operation, I would probably probably recommend probably a 150 horse tractor, which will probably run you around uh, to uh, 200,000, 225,000. Okay. So from the value proposition, you know, you're probably 15% over here and, and you know, guys that we've been dealing with in the last hundred years around here. Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to understand is why why would why would I pay more for this spent, which by the way, I don't I don't see a lot of them around here. Yeah. So why would I take a risk buying a new product that costs more than what I'm used to? I'm very happy with my case and deer products. Um why would I pay more? Um so I think a number one thing would be our gold star warranty. Yeah, but everybody else has the warranties too. And, and okay. my, my dear dealer will let me do a loaner within literally within a phone call because you know we've been doing business for 30 yeah. years. So usually it's just pick up the phone and I call Gabe and say, Hey Gabe, bring me out of this thing's down. And usually within if they don't have a technician out here, usually the 24 hours they're they're giving me a loaner. So you're well, I like your warranty's okay. Yeah. But it's not that much, it's not better. Yeah. It's it's, it's more of a as is. As everybody else. So I'm going to ask you again, why would I pay more? Um, another add-on to that tractor is the CVT transmission. <laughs> right. Um, that transmission's the only one in the market at those horsepower of tractors. Um, so this, so being that CVT transmission is a stepless transmission. There's no gears within that transmission. Um, through our studies, it's been shown to be easier on the crop itself. So you're not tearing up your soil. Um, another thing with those is. So what does that do for me? The CVT transmission. No. no. I'm asking about the value proposition. So if I'm not turning up my soil, so what does that mean? Okay, so if you're not, so within the soil, as you may know, you have, you put a lot of money into it. There's a lot of bacteria in the soil, a lot of things that go into the soil that help your crop grow. 
Mm -hmm. um, so if we can minimize that damage to the top of your soil as much as possible, that will help your yield in the end. Uh, so the value equation, what you're telling me is I'll get better yields. Yes. Using the pit. Yep. Um, another thing with that is, so our, our fent trackers that you're able to, I don't know if you have a smartphone or not, mm -hmm. um, but you can download an app that connects your tracker directly to your phone. And with that CVD transmission, it actually connects to your phone and tells you your fuel consumption. Okay. Um, so what these FENT tractors do is um, they can, when they're pulling your load, they do a calculation within the system that tells you how, exactly how much horsepower and at what RPM to pull that um, piece of equipment to be the most economical. Um, so you won't see a huge, huge money save in the beginning when you're operating these equipment, but the longer that you use these equipment, the more money you'll see you're saving on fuel. So what you're telling me is you're going to have a fuel savings. Yeah. So, so now there's two parts of the value equation. So you're telling me I'm going to increase my yield yep. and I'll get better fuel consumption, yep. which is money in my pocket, right? Yep. All right. What other parts of the value equation are there? Um, another thing is, is... No, I don't know if you know if a lot of you guys have bad backs or anything, but all fan tractors come with an air ride suspension cab. Um, so a smoother ride overall compared to the competitors. Um, so that could you know save your back, spend a lot of time out in the field. Um, a lot of the inside of the cabs, all the buttons and the throttles, everything you look at are color coordinated. Um, so you know if you're working at night, it's easier for you to see which buttons you're pushing, um, what they do. Uh, you know, it's kind of it's user friendly. You're really trying to make it user friendly. You made a very valid point about. Um, fence being very technical. So with these newer models that they're coming out with, really trying to make them more user friendly. Um, they, they added a larger touch screen. The touch screen is now 10 inch touch screen. Um, that's for your GPS system, all your hydraulic systems, your monitor systems. <laughs> um, is there anything in that area that you'd like to go well, more detail on? I, I, I think you've got a huge hill to climb because you're more expensive. Yeah. Than your case or deer, who I'm very happy with. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows about you. Your market share is probably what five percent, four percent, and you know deer and case are dominating. So I think the challenge I'm seeing is: Do you have any testimonials? Do you have any any customers that you can sell to that that I could talk to? Um, so I actually emailed those to Mr. Kais already. Okay, so he has those. Yeah, he already asked me for those, and then the next day I emailed those to him right away. And I, I think as I'm looking at this, you know, with this premium I'm paying. I'm still struggling. I mean, I'm glad you're telling me I'm going to increase yields. What, what you haven't told me is, and I don't know how we're going to figure this out, is, I mean, obviously, if the increase in yields will bridge that 50 or that 20% gap, mm -hmm. we're golden. I mean, that's something I, I wouldn't mind trying. But the other part of the equation that's, that's tough is because you don't have a lot of population out there, how can you explain to me that when it comes time for me to trade, um, one thing, so the trading values, I know for a fact that these fence aren't holding because there's such a limited pool of yeah. people that want to buy them. Yeah. And a lot of people are scared. And now it's a <clears throat> warranty. I don't have this gold star. It's five years from now. I'm afraid that, you know, if people are lining up to buy the deer in the case, mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to be lining up to buy the fence. So how do we overcome that? I guess so. My, my first question would be for you is um, your main problem was you're having downtime. But yet you're telling me you love Case and John Deere. So mm -hmm. what is the issue with those two equipment that's causing you this downturn? Well, I think they're getting old. Okay. So it's that's why we're talking is they're having the downtime because it's time to, to replenish the fleet. Yeah. So so that's my problem. Now the good news is they're Case and Deere, so I'm gonna have people lining up that there's a market for them. Yeah. So what's the what's your what can you do to help me feel more comfortable about the trading values on these fence? Because I know they're not holding their value because it's a very high priced tractor. There's um, no doubt. It's it's Cadillac. I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure on the trade-in value. Um, we currently do carry a fence that someone did trade in to upgrade for another fan. Um, and it's sitting on a lot currently, but you were correct that we were having a hard time selling it due to actually it's holding its value too well. So we're actually having a hard time getting it sold based off of its price. Right, because nobody's gonna sit and pay two hundred and Ten thousand dollars for a four-year-old machine that you paid two hundred and thirty grand for, and so that's that's something we got to think about because in the value equation, you know, I'm going to look at cost of ownership, which is sounds to me like you've got some we got some hills to climb because we've got a premium price product that's not going to fetch a premium price as a trade. Yeah. So that that's not good. So when we look at the boot price on this, it's going to be a challenge. So what I'm afraid of, I, what I got to be careful of, is that if if we do this deal. How do you ensure that I'm not locked into you guys? Because you're going to be the only ones wanting to give me any kind of value in that trade. Um, so to make you more to make you more comfortable about this, 
Um, what I'd like to do is, would you be able to find time to come in and we can do a walk around on the equipment? I can show you everything about the equipment, let you test drive the equipment. Um, you can get a feel for it, see if you feel like if it's co too complicated, something like that. And then um, I can write down some more information that you would like to see. Um, we can have that next meeting. I think, I think what we'll do before we do that, I'm gonna need, here's what I'll need for you before I waste my time going out and looking at the unit because okay. I don't care how good it's gonna be. When it comes down to the dollar and cents, here's, here's the obstacle you're gonna have to jump. Okay. Um, I need to see residual values okay. on your trades. Okay. I'm gonna to need to see what, a because I'll probably be trading these after eight years. I wanna know what an 8,000, 8,000, or a, I'm sorry, an eight year old fence gonna fetch. Okay. I want to see the curves in the market, and I know you can do a little homework. Okay. Um, obviously, you're going to have to work on this price. <laughs> and the last thing we wanted to get into is, you know, I still need some testimonies where I want to find out about parts and service because you can give me the best deal. Like you said, I can get the best deal on earth, but if the downtime is killing me because I got to wait for a parts coming from Germany or wherever they're made, um, this isn't going to work. Yeah. So I'm going to have to make, you're going to have to give me some assurances about okay. parts availability those type of things. And if you okay. can get me that, then maybe, maybe we'll think about coming out and taking a look at the track. Okay. And I brought these for you. These are some of our, uh, our equipment that we carry. This is all, this is Vermeer. You can just take your time. You can look through that. If that's something else you guys are interested in. You carry Vermeer product. Good. Um, I don't want to waste your time anymore today. No, you're not wasting um, time. Here's my business card. Feel okay. free to call me. Okay. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me today. No, I'm good. It, um, do you have any more questions for me? I do not. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. It. Thank you.